Greetings everyone, I'm Dr. Anth. A recent article published in the science journal PLOS One purports to find evidence that women in foraging groups have always been hunters. I will critique the article in this video. Something that I've noted throughout graduate school and my subsequent academic career is that many new researchers constantly reinvent the wheel because they do not bother to read the source material from the past. They do research that they think says something new, but that in many cases just reaffirms what is already known. Or, due to presumably unconscious bias, twist their actual results to say something that seems new. This appears to be the case for the PLOS One article linked in the description box below. For two million years or more, our ancestors lived in small groups that ate whatever was edible in their region. This only ended for most of us beginning around 9,000 years ago with the development of agriculture and pastoralism, herding of animals. However, there are still many groups that continue to live that original lifestyle. Anthropological literature of the past called these groups hunter-gatherers. While this term is still used, most anthropologists prefer the term foragers, which more accurately captures what these groups are doing. Foraging for whatever is edible in their environmental region. The term hunter-gatherers has been used to imply that only men provided meat to the group through hunting for game animals. The term has also been used to imply that women were only gathering vegetation, such as nuts, berries, tubers, and leafy foodstuffs. However, this is inaccurate. Women actually provided the majority of food eaten by their families, which included the majority of animal protein they ate. Depending on where the group lived, the women might gather shellfish from coastal tide pools. They might gather eggs from nesting birds. They might set snares for small game such as rabbits. They might collect turtles or insects. They might create weirs in the tide pools to gather fish washed in with the tide that were then caught in the dammed pools from which they could, not, could be easily gathered by the women. They might create nets from vines that they used with a group of other women and children to encircle an area of the forest, gradually driving the animals into a smaller and smaller area until the animals were easily killed with clubs, darts, spears, or arrows. All this information has been known for decades. Women provided the most animal protein in the group's diet, but this is not hunting in the classical sense of the word. Hunting implies stalking animals, perhaps for days. It also is most often applied to herd animals that live in grasslands, savannas, and tundra. It may also be applied to offshore hunting of mammals such as whales, which requires ocean-worthy craft and probably days living offshore. This type of big game hunting is dangerous and requires days spent away from the group. Could women do this type of hunting? Certainly some of them could and perhaps did. However, with no birth control, women of reproductive age would generally be pregnant or nursing or taking care of young children while becoming pregnant again. Pregnancy, lactation, and childcare are heavy burdens added to the requirements of feeding their families. Therefore, it is logical to assume that women forged in the area in which the group was currently living, rather than leaving the group and their children to go off for several days tracking large game. Another note, these hunts by men were not generally successful. When a hunt was successful, the man or men who brought home a large animal, such as an antelope, provided the group with a feast. But over the course of a year, the foraging done by the women provided the majority of both plant items and animal protein. These facts have been known for a long time. The authors of the article try to alter these known facts by reframing the foraging of animal protein by women into hunting. The researchers compiled data on 63 foraging groups to conclude that women were hunters just like men. However, a careful reading of the article indicates that the groups where the authors found evidence for the assertion that women were hunters 
is among groups living in forested regions. As I mentioned earlier, women living in forested areas can work together using nets to force animals into a small area where they can be easily killed. This could be called hunting, but it is not hunting in the usual sense of the word. In these communities, it is the men who go off to kill and hunt and kill the larger, more dangerous forest animals. As for foragers who live in non-forested regions, the best the researchers could do is say that the Hadza, who live in the savanna of Tanzania, have women help with tracking animals about 15% of the time when the men go hunting. If a woman didn't have any children for whatever reason, would she have been able to go hunting with the men? Yes, if the men agreed. Did that happen often? We don't know, but I doubt it. There is some evidence that mammoth and mastodon hunters moved to hunting ranges as a group and that women and older children would be involved in driving the animals towards the kill zone. But as the final kill was the most dangerous part, it is probable that only adult men were involved in that action. There is evidence of a burial in the highlands of Peru dated 8000 BP of a woman in her late teens laid to rest with an extensive toolkit, including knife blades. See the link for that article in the description box below. That young woman was selected out of the gene pool of that group. It would be unwise for the survival of a group to have women participate in dangerous big game hunts. A man could impregnate several women before he was killed in a hunt. A woman's reproductive contribution to the group occurs slowly over the span of a generation. Dying due, due to a hunt at the start of her reproductive life cycle is evolutionarily foolish. On the other hand, were women capable of obtaining animals and eggs to nourish their families? Certainly. We have plenty of evidence for that. Women were highly skilled in that effort as women were the primary providers of animal protein to their families. But is that hunting? And does it really matter? Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.